From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impe Presents. Thank you once again for inviting us into your home. We feel like we're right there with you. Or perhaps you see it at the office. We don't know. But we're glad that we can be there to give you some global headlines in the light of what the Bible says about them. First of all, the Islamic Antichrist? Hmm, is that possible? Once again, leader of the Palestinians, he had this to say, we will only accept Jerusalem as our capital. And World War III, oh my, we'll be considering that for sure. We have very, very serious headlines for you. We're going to go on to our global headlines now. And this first one is amazing, a statement by Ahmadinejad. We'll take a look. There he is, of course, Ahmadinejad. Iran and Syria will create a new world order. And the Islamic Antichrist, the shocking truth about the real nature of this person. That's by Joel Richardson. And going on again, now we've seen this many, many times, but we want you to keep it in mind. Kissinger said it. Obama primed to create new world order. And again, the world must forge a new order or retreat to chaos. Here's something from the Detroit News. Has uh, increase in government power crossed over to, there's a big word, socialism? And here it is again. The officials of the Obama party are saying this, the Democrats support Global socialism, now the cooperation between European socialists and the Democratic Party has intensified significantly over the past several years and involves regular contact. Well, that's quite a statement by some of his officials. Do you agree with that? Let's back up to the first headline. I could not believe it, that Iran and Syria say, we can create a new world order. I couldn't believe that. Jack, do you believe that they could create a new world order? Absolutely not. And there will not be an Islamic Antichrist. The book is in air. For the last 100 years, seven organizations have attempted to create the new world order. Uh, we begin with the Illuminati, then the Bilderbergs, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Club of Rome, the United Nations, and the New Age Movement. Now, the Bilderbergs in 1954 began the European Community, which is now the European Union, and their purpose was to create a world government beginning with those nations. And by 1981, they had 10. So everyone thought, oh, that's what's in the Bible in Daniel chapter 7 verses 7 and 20, and Revelation 12, 3 and 13, 1, and Revelation 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16, 10 nations. No, I used to think that. Now, the Club of Rome, the fifth one I just mentioned, had a plan whereby they would regionalize the world into 10 groups. And we showed you two weeks ago the 10. It's already on the planning boards. And just recently, the 27 nations of the European Union signed the Lisbon Treaty, wherein all 27 gave up their sovereignty. They have nothing more to say as nations, because they now have all given their power to the European Union, and that's, of course, Revelation 17, verse 13. They have one mind, and they give their power and strength unto the world dictator. Wow, things are happening and fast. But they've already divided the 27 nations into a grouping of 10. But they said, that's just the beginning. We're going to get the whole world into this, 247 nations, and it will become a 10-division world empire, and Islam will be part of it, but they will not control it. Now, this is exciting. This, what I'm about to tell you, is proof that the Lord Jesus is about to return. We're going home. What's that? 2,000 years ago, Rabbi Hagian 
said, in the latter days there will arise a Gentile monarchy and it will divide into a 10 division world empire. And that will be the announcement of the coming of our Messiah to rule and reign here on the earth. And all 16 of the Old Testament prophets agree. Then the two church fathers, Arrhenius and Justin Martyr, in 170 AD, 1840 years ago, said, when we have a 10 division world empire, our Jesus will come and put a stop to this world government. It's here, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to see it set up because of what just happened with the Lisbon Treaty. Now, why will it not be Islamic? Because in Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he saw this image and he couldn't understand it. And so they looked around the land and finally found a little prophet named Daniel who said, I can tell the king what it was because my God, Yahweh, has revealed it to me. And he stood in front of Nebuchadnezzar in that second chapter. He said, you saw this image and it represents the five final world empires. And he said, I want to explain this to you thoroughly. Now, first of all, Revelation 17, 10 already quoted says there'll be seven world empires, right? Now, you say, you say that, but can you prove it? The first world empire was Assyria, Genesis 2, 14. The second one was Egypt, Genesis 12, 14. And then there's scores of historical books there that don't mention anything more until we get to the third world empire as Daniel stands before Nebuchadnezzar and says, you are the third one, Babylon, Daniel 1.1. 1, 1. And soon the Medes and the Persians will overtake you and that's the fourth world empire, Daniel 5.28. They'll be overtaken by Greece, the fifth world empire, and that's Daniel 8.21, Alexander the Great. And then the Roman empire will take over Greece, the sixth empire and that's Daniel 9 26 and Romans 1 7 and then we have the final government the new world order whoa a new world order if a new world order is right now then they're looking for a man right now to head up the new world order and they're sort of giving him a deified effect they want a savior for the world is that correct Jack the old Roman Empire call their leaders gods like Nero. We've had it in our own day in Japan, Hirohito. But during this time of the new world order, they're going to worship the dictator as a god. That's right. And isn't it amazing that Louis Farrakhan, head of the Islamic movement here in America, said a black father and a white mother produced our Savior, Obama. Isn't it strange that Jesse Jackson Jr. said, we will have to add an extra chapter to the Bible because of Obama. And Spike Lee, the movie director said, we always used to say before Christ and after Christ, soon it will be before Obama and after Obama. That's blasphemy because my Jesus is God, not a man. But the world's going to turn that way. And Revelation 13, 8 says, All who dwell upon the earth whose names are not written in the book of life shall worship him. And he even accepts it. He'll exalt himself above everything that is called God, Daniel eleven thirty six, 36, and 2 Thessalonians 2, 4. We're in the last days, folks. Friends, we're going to go on with our global headlines. And there was a kind of a surprise the first few months into President Obama's presidency. He received the Nobel Peace Prize. Remember that? And here you see the Wall Street Journal. Obama awarded the Peace Prize. Going on here, U.S. Envoy launches new Mideast Peace Mission. And Assad to Obama. Can you imagine? Drop plan for Israel, Syria, peace talks. They're depending on him. They want him to take over what is happening in the Middle East. There you see it. Abbas, Palestinians will accept only Jerusalem as our capital. And again, Obama promises the Arabs Jerusalem will be theirs. And Netanyahu, 
Of course, he's the prime minister of Israel. Israel will never share Jerusalem with Palestinians. Now, I think that you can see, friends, all of these headlines certainly do point to the New World Order and someone to head it up. Jack, how about that? New World Order. Rexella, this is amazing. When the leaders of Norway presented Obama with the Peace Prize, he had only been in office serving 12 days when they planned to give it to him. And they said, well, we're not giving it to him on the basis of what he has accomplished, but what he will accomplish in the future. They're already saying that he would probably be the world leader who brought the peace. And this Bible says when the world dictator comes to power, he comes in peaceably, Daniel 11, 21. He enters in peaceably, Daniel 11, 24. And he makes a peace contract for seven years in Daniel 9, 27. It has to be seven full years of 360 days like the Jewish calendar said for a year. Now, it's the covenant of death and hell, Isaiah 28, 15. Why? Because through peace, he destroys many, Daniel 8, 25. Well, how can that be? Because it's a false hope. It's not going to be a lasting peace. It only lasts for 42 months. Again, Daniel 9, 27. And so Jeremiah 6.14 and Jeremiah 8.11 both say, when they say, peace, peace, isn't it wonderful? There'll be no peace. It was the false message by the wrong leader. And when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And do you know why sudden destruction comes? Because we have a president who has promised Jerusalem to the Arabs. It's not theirs. It doesn't belong to them. 930 times this book says Jerusalem belongs to the Jew, and I make no apologies for saying it. I don't want to be politically correct. I want to be scripturally right. It's the land and capital for the Jews, period. And World War III starts over the division of Israel and Jerusalem, Joel 3, verse 2. Oh, that's amazing, Jack. It starts over that. We find that Russia is the one that's going to break the peace contract that the world dictator set up in Revelation 6, 1, when he comes to power on that white horse like Christ comes seven years later on a white horse in Revelation 19, 11. And while they're having the 42 months of peace, then suddenly... Russia does something in Ezekiel 38, 11, saying, I will go against them that are at rest, that are at peace. Now, Israel has never had any peace since they became a nation. Again, restoring what once was theirs when Nebuchadnezzar took them to Babylon for hundreds of years. When they came back in 1948, from that time onward, it's been nothing but war and bedlam and rockets being blown at them from the Palestinians, the Hamas, and the rest of that crowd. But now there will be that peace in Daniel 9:27 for 42 months only, and then Russia says what I already said, I'm going to go against them that are at rest, that are at peace. And... Why did it start? I repeat what I said earlier, because they divided the land and Jerusalem, Joel 3, verse 2. Oh, Jack, and then one last quick question here. Where exactly will World War III be fought? Israel is the battleground mentioned 18 times. Chapter 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. Chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice in 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 29. Enough proof, it's coming. They're getting ready. Oh, my. Can you see how close the coming of the Lord could be? We need to be ready. Are you ready? If the Lord came today, would you be ready? Oh, Jack, give us a wonderful invitation here. Oh, what a troubled world. And you want peace? Christ made peace through the blood of his cross, Colossians 1.20. He'll give you the peace right now. He's the Prince of Peace. Lord Jesus, Savior, 
Prince of Peace, my soul is troubled. I want to be ready for your return, Lord Jesus. I confess all my sin now, known and unknown. I lay it on you because your precious blood was shed to wash away every taint and stain of sin I've ever committed. Thank you, Jesus. And now I ask you to forgive me and to come into my heart. Save me now. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Oh, amen. Congratulations. If you prayed that prayer, I trust that you did because if you prayed the prayer, the Lord came into your heart and forgave you of anything you confessed. Well, write to me. There's my address. I'll send you absolutely free this little booklet. First Steps in a New Direction. The Lord will walk with you in that new direction. And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our wonderful offer of the week, A Place Called Heaven by Dr. Robert Jeffries. All right, I want you to be sure and listen to Bob right now because I would want you to order this. And uh, here's our announcer, Bob. To order your copy of the book, A Place Called Heaven, with the bonus DVD, Heaven, the Eternal Home for Some. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A, 6Y1. Thank you so much, Bob. I appreciate that. Now, please call or write for the wonderful offer of the week, A Place Called Heaven. It's one of the finest books I've ever read on heaven. And of course, it is by Dr. Jeffries. And I have a bonus I'm going to be sending with it when I get your order. And it is Heaven, the eternal home for some. You know, friends, today, if we ever needed to be living for the Lord, we need to be living for the Lord right now. And by the way, if you'd like to see this program again, go to our website, jvim.com, because you'll be able to see it and uh, maybe even replay it over and over. Jack's given us an awful lot to think about, hasn't he? I do want to say that, as I said, we need to be living so much for the Lord. And I came across this little saying that I think is very, very good. When you flee temptations, don't leave a forwarding address. Uh, for sure. Uh, I trust that you will once again welcome us into your home next week. We'll look forward to that. And until then, remember, God cares for you. And so do we. So very, very much. Bye-bye.